From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello, and welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. As always, it is a joy to come into your home, and as always, I wish that I could be there in person to discuss some of the things that we are going to be talking about today, because this first one really hurts my heart, friends. I can't believe the headline that I'm going to give you right now. Christianity has so lost its grip that many among the old worry most about non-existence. Can you believe that? Non-existence. I never thought in my wildest dreams that I would ever imagine that they would even think that Christianity would not exist any longer and then going on. The Bible was written for each person <laughs> to interpret as she chooses or he chooses. Is that for sure? Is it not what God chooses? He wrote the book. And we need to know what he means, every single word of it. And so we'll be discussing that also. And then here's one. Terror Rampage horrifies London. Jack and I have been there many, many times. And my, oh, my, it was such a great Christian country. And now Christianity is being put down over there. And now terrorism is rising up over there. We're going to be discussing that also. And I want to thank you once again for all of your prayers. Thank you for praying for Jack. He's doing so much better. You know, he, uh, he would love to be right here and communicate with you, but he reads your letters. And once in a while I look in and I see a tear fall now and then because he thanks you so much for what you mean to him and, uh, of course, what he has meant to you. You've give, given testimonies along that line. Well, we are very, very delighted to have as our guest a pastor. Now, uh, one of our guests uh, is the pastor of one of our board members, Roger Lenhart. He has been on our board for many, many years, over 25 years probably. And his pastor, uh, I was introduced to him not too long ago, and I thought, I need to interview this pastor because we're going to be discussing things that are going on in the churches how very, very relevant this is to all of us. I wish that your pastor were listening in right now to hear what we have to say. This pastor is Pastor Walt Shepherd. He grew up in a Christian home, was saved at age six. After graduating from high school, he joined the United States Army. And Pastor, thank you for that contribution to our country and being in the Army. Well, shortly after his honorable discharge, he surrendered to preach and began Bible college. I'm not going to read his whole history here. <laughs> it's wonderful. But God has certainly blessed him. And three years uh, later, after he was in his first church, he was called to pastor Grace Baptist Church in Albuquerque, New Mexico, in the fall of 2000. God directed Pastor Shepherd to start the Cornerstone Baptist Church in Finley, Ohio. Now, that's where Roger Lenhart and his wife live. Finley, Ohio. And I want to thank you, Pastor, for starting that church. Um, it was it, an honor. <laughs> it, well, I want to ask you this. You are a pastor. We're going to be discussing so much about what's happening in the churches today. Have, are you disturbed by what you're seeing in the churches, by what you're seeing some of your friends perhaps getting into being quiet? Absolutely. Uh, we're seeing a delusion uh, of the Word of God. It's not being preached. It's not being taught. And I, and I, I believe we have a, a lot of good people, good meaning people going to church, and most of them just going through the motions and not being fed the Word of God by, by pastors. And so we're asking that God would uh, work in the hearts of these pastors, wake them up, and, and stir their people up from the Word of God. And so that's, that's the the hope and the desire that we have that mm -hmm. uh, that, that would happen. You use those three words, <laughs> word of, of God. God. Yeah. You know, it's wonderful to give your opinion behind the pulpit, but it's the word of God that changes lives. 
Yeah. It's not what we have to say so right. much, Pastor, but it's wonderful to give the Word of God. Now, this first headline just really, really hurts my heart, friends. And I'd like for you to take a look at it right now. Running from extinction. Can you believe it? Christianity has so lost its grip that many among the old worry mostly about non-existence. I'm going to come to the pastor right now that's and a, ask, Pastor, are you worried about non-existence? That's not going to happen. No, no. In fact, this is the oldest question uh, in the Bible. And uh, in Job 14, 14, there was a question posed, if a man die, shall he live again? And that question has been asked over and over again down through the centuries. And uh, Jesus comes and, and he says in John chapter 11, verse number 25, uh, that uh, the, that uh, I am the resurrection. He says, I am the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And so the question asked in the Old Testament, is there life after death? The question that was answered in the New Testament is yes, there is. There is life after death. And it is only through and by Jesus Christ. Now, what's a blessing is that uh, the question, of course, posed here in this article is what happens after death? What is death like? And uh, I studied this, and of course, as a pastor, I've done a lot of funerals, and I wanted to know what, what is it like when someone is walking through that valley? Mm -hmm. And the Bible uses that phrase there in Psalm 23. David says it's a valley of the shadow of death. And, uh, and he talks about evil even being present in that valley. But what's it like? What's it like for a person when they leave this world and go to uh, eternity. What is that like? Well, for a believer, for those that know Jesus Christ, if they have been given eternal life through and by Jesus Christ, trusting him as Savior, they have victory. They have victory over death. And uh, I studied the two uh, notable deaths in the New Testament after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And you know, Miss Rexella, the word death is not used to describe their dying. Uh, Stephen, the first deacon, uh, was a man that uh, preached his first sermon. They didn't like it. They stoned him. And, uh, and it says about him dying, he fell asleep. Uh, the apostle Paul said, the time of my departure is at hand. And the victory that we have over death is wonderful because it's like falling asleep. Right. It's like departing. And what a blessing it is that there is life after death. And the hope that we have is only through Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, and as we give hope to the people, the pastors behind the pulpit give hope to the people. They give those three words, the word of God. You know, what we have to say, as I mentioned a moment ago, really will not bring comfort to people. But what God has to say means everything. And my husband, as you well know, is the walking Bible. He's, meant, he's memorized over 18,000 verses of the Bible, which is all the New Testament, much of the Old. And um, he realized a long time ago that this is what was significant. And he's so burdened today that pastors behind the pulpit are not giving the Bible. They're giving their opinions, psychology, and so forth. Well, I'm going to put on something right now that Jack had to say about what's happening right now in the churches. Take a look, please. Never had an hour that is this desperate as far as true Christianity is concerned. Even the evangelicals aren't living for the Lord as they should and are eliminating certain doctrines. In 1929, the fundamentalists of America said, you must believe these five things or you'll never see the inside of heaven. And we've got so many of you pastors, now evangelicals, bunk! And only a fundamentalist evangelical counts. And they believe these five points, Christ is the eternal God. Second member of the Trinity. Secondly, he was virgin born. Thirdly, his blood and blood alone shed at Calvary can save the soul. Fourthly, he was raised from the dead. And finally, he's coming back and soon. Oh, amen. And these men are deviating from this, and I don't care how many years they preach. If they don't believe those five things, they'll never see the inside of heaven. And Second Timothy 3.13, it says, Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. That's why Matthew 24, verses 5, 11, and 24 state, There shall be false Christ and false prophets. And... 
the churches of Jesus Christ are loaded with them. You know what you men of God, if you're men of God, need to do? Get into this book. Second Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And Psalm 119.11 says, thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you, because that's what some of you are doing right now with all of your confusion. Yes, with all of their confusion, and I want you to know how he emphasized giving the people something, giving them the word. Now, there are churches that are full, like the Baptist Church uh, down in Dallas, Pastor Jeffers, Woodside Bible Church in Troy, Michigan, Pastor Smith. That's where our announcer's pastor uh, is pastoring. And also Family Day Ministries. There you have Mike and Melissa Miller. And there are many wonderful ministries out there, but I'm sorry to say, that so many churches are empty. They're not getting anything. We get letters all the time saying, you're our church because we get something from you on television. And I'm so happy to have Pastor Shepherd with us today because you are giving your people the word of God, Pastor Shepherd. Were you not surprised at uh, what uh, LifeWay Research gave to us as far as a research on the percentages of people I'm going to put it on the screen right now. This very first one, the Bible was written for each person to interpret as he or she chooses. doesn't matter what God says. Uh, look at that. Only 19% agree strongly with that. Well, some of them disagree. Go on here. The Bible, like all sacred writings, contains helpful accounts of ancient myths. Oh, but is not literally true. 17% agree with that. 30% did not. Now I'm going to go to our guest. Pastor, God said what he meant, and yes. he meant what he said. Yes. Is that not correct? That's correct. That's correct. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it's profitable. It's for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Uh, we have a, a dearth in Bible preaching churches. Yes. And the Bible says over there in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 17, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Uh, we don't get faith without the word. And we need the word to have more faith. And with, without it, we don't have what we need in our, in our, in our, in our community, our, our, our believers. In this country, by the way, our founding fathers believed in this book. Yes. Our, our, our churches used to preach this book. And we're getting away from it. We're putting our 20-minute sermonettes and entertaining people in the churches. And we're not preaching the word of God. Amen. And that's so needed today. It is. So very, very needed. Because we need to know what God thinks about everything in our life. Do you ever wonder what God thinks about what you're doing? He's written about it. He referred to everything in the Bible. And so pastors truly need to be referring to the Bible every time we go to church. Now, take this next survey. This truly hurt my heart. Jesus Christ's death on the cross is the only sacrifice that could remove the penalty of sin. You know what? Only 40% agreed with that. They think there are other ways. Going on, only those who trust in Jesus Christ alone as their Savior receive God's free gift of eternal salvation. Now, only 33% agree with that. You know, Jesus said, I am the way no man comes to the Father right. but by me. And then going on, by the good deeds that I do, I partly contribute to earning my place in heaven. Are you kidding? We can't work our way there. And then, again, <laughs> a lot of people agree with that, or somewhat agree. And then this one, the Holy Spirit is a divine being. But it's not equal with God, the Father, and Jesus. Well, I thought that 1 John 5, 7 said, These three are one, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Right. Pastor right. Shepherd, is that, that not true? That is absolutely true. And the percentages of people that, uh, that do not believe the Bible today is, is staggering. And, and I'm wondering uh, if, if we could just encourage the pastors, preach the book. Uh, this book is a powerful book. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even through the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. This book will do amazing things. And I believe the percentages are so high because people don't know the book. And, uh, and it's a sad, sad condition of our nation when we have so much Bible literacy. 
Absolutely. And you know, the Bible's so clear, Pastor. It is. You know, it's not a confusing book. When God gave the Ten Commandments, uh, they weren't ten suggestions. There were ten commandments that he gave to us. So we should never doubt the word of God. And because there's a falling away, a lot of things are happening around the world that truly grieve our hearts. Take a look at what happened in the UK, if you will. Five killed in depraved UK attack. USA Today terrorist rampage horrifies London. And then Europeans struggle with elusive threat. Oh, they just can't figure it all out. There are the authorities trying to figure out what really happened. London attack. British-born attacker known to MI5. And then London terrorist was a soldier oh, of ISIS. Man alive, he was even born there. Erdogan. Soon Europeans will not walk safely on their streets. Now, you know, I'm going to stop here for a moment because Pastor Shepherd has something very, very important to share with us about what's happening over there right now, and especially in Turkey, if you will, yes. Pastor. Yes. Erdogan, Erdogan, in this article, has committed uh, terrorism, verbal terrorism, committing uh, uh, and, and, and threatening us in the West, uh, walking down the streets, threatening those in, in Europe. And if you remember last summer when the, the failed coup, the so-called coup, and, uh, and I'm a soldier, I'm a, I'm a veteran, and I, I looked at the pictures of what they were doing, and those soldiers were utterly confused. It was, a, in my opinion, a staged event. And Erdogan was able to control more of his, his power and centralize right. his power. Now remember, Turkey was the last caliphate. It was destroyed in 1924, and that went into a uh, to, uh, to a more modern uh, Turkey. And there was a new leader that came on and took him from the Muslim extreme uh, beliefs that they had, and and moved it to more moderate beliefs. And so uh, they did away with the uh, the caliphate. But that was the last one. Now, now a caliphate simply means Islamic state. ISIS is wanting an Islamic state, a caliphate. And uh, ISIS is a problem. ISIS is a danger. Uh, ISIS poses a threat. Yes. But Turkey uh, is a government, a, 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 a NATO ally, that if they centralize the power and move that into a caliphate, now we have a nuclear Turkey that Whoa. is part of Ezekiel 38 and 39's prophecy, Togamoth, which comes down against the nation of Israel. These are very exciting times because in April, next month, just a couple of weeks away, there is a referendum on the 16th, a vote. If this vote goes through, it changes the constitution of Turkey, and Erdogan can be then basically free to reign that country without any democracy, without oh any vote. Uh, and so this is a very interesting event. And he just committed, if I look at this and see this uh, article, he has committed terrorism in the sense of just threatening. Wait till it gets, till he gets full power oh, of, yes. the, of the nation. And we see how they're all forming up there in the north. They're going to they're be marching on Israel very, very soon. And I'm yes. going to uh, go on with uh, a few more headlines here. Six out of ten people in France don't feel safe anywhere and certainly Jack's relatives in Belgium feel that way. Swedish police station so dangerous. Officers can't commute in alone. Are you kidding? And then here's Belgium. Fugitive heightens Belgium terror worries. Well, you know, terrorism is a real prophecy. Yes. And we can see that, can't we, Pastor? Yes. That it is expanding around the world right now. Yes, and terrorism will expand. It's an ideology. It's an ideology that, uh, that is not of God, it's of Satan. And, uh, and it's moving faster and faster. They want a one world caliphate. And uh, again, it's a problem. And terrorism uh, is recruiting more rapidly because the society itself is deteriorating. Mm -hmm. So Syria is being loaded with people that want to get into the jihad. Yes. and fight and yes. become a part of this. And so, and remember, Syria is a neighbor of Turkey. And once this all comes together, we could have an amazing event coming in just a couple of years or a couple of months. Oh, absolutely. Yes. They're, they're sort of becoming all friends there yes. in the North. Russia, China, North Korea, they're all going to be coming together and they're going to be 
between March and Israel. Yes. We all know about yes. what's going to be happening there. Yes. But we're going to take a moment and say, I'm so sorry to tell you about something. This is the wind up of this wonderful, wonderful offer. Eternity. Who? Where? When? Why? So please make the call right away. Take a look, please, at the promo. Eternity. Who, where, when, why is the most astounding biblical video study ever produced by doctors Jack and Rexella Van Epi. Out of hundreds of predictions prophesied, the greatest and final sign is about to happen when Christ returns as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The event is about to happen, even at the door. Could it occur in 2017 or 18? Be ready. Why? Eternity is forever. Here are seven of the numerous questions answered on this video. One, which of the world's religions is the only one that can get you to heaven? Two, what do most people today believe about heaven and hell? Three, what form did Jesus have before he came to earth, spirit or bodily? Four, what is the rapture and what will happen to our bodies at the time of the rapture? Five, how could the Old Testament saints get to heaven if Christ's blood had not yet been shed. Six, how can we be saved from death, the grave, and assured of heaven? Seven, could Jesus return in our generation? Order this all-important video today. Now, friends, I have often said we're all going into eternity, and all your questions are answered about it on here. Who, where, when, why? We're going there. So please, there's the 800 number, and there's the address. Please make the call right away. You need to have it because this is the wind-up on this wonderful, wonderful offer. Now, Jews... Wherever they are, they are in danger right at this point, even here in the United States. Please take a look. At, I was shocked by the Wall Street Journal. Bomb threats reshape Jewish centers. Now, in Alabama, they had to evacuate its preschool class three times, one right after the other. But over there, they're in threat, too. If Lebanese rockets strike Israel, it's a decoration of war. Now, the education minister said this, and then going on, Hezbollah is our number one challenge. And, of course, that's the Israeli defense minister who has said this. They know what they are facing, not only uh, over there, but even here. I couldn't believe they had to shut down those wonderful little centers for children, preschool. Now, Pastor Shepherd, I know you have a great love for Israel. And again, I want to thank you for being our guest today. Would you please express how you feel about the nation of Israel and what's happening to it right now? Israel just wants to live in peace. Uh, she wants to exist in peace. She wants to have uh, no threat of terrorism, but she has to defend herself. God gave that land to Israel. May 14, 1948, the world community recognized Israel for the first time in 2,000 years as a nation. Right. Never happened before. And, uh, and Jeremiah chapter 16 tells us that it's their land. The Palestinians think there should be a two-state solution. They don't want a two-state solution. They want one state solution with Israel out. That is their land and that is uh, their opportunity to live there. In 2007, I was up on the border during the war and we were feeding the soldiers up there with the IDF. They took me up to the fence and I looked across the valley there to Hezbollah. There was some terrorists over there. They're aiming their weapons at us. And I looked at what they were facing every single day. Yeah. And this young soldier, IDF soldier, looked at me, just a, a teenager almost, young kid. He looked at me and he pointed down to carry out Shimona where the lights are. He says, down there is where my family lives. And those people are trying to kill my family. Oh, we yeah. just want to live in peace. That's all we want. And God's people in America ought to be a people that support the nation of Israel. Anti-Semitism is, is, is at an all-time high here in America. And we need preachers and pastors to get up and preach the importance of supporting this great nation, the nation of Israel. And love her, pray for her, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And uh, we are living in 
perilous times, dangerous times, mm -hmm. but these are days that God's people can stand up and do the right thing and support that dear, dear nation. We do know that God's going to preserve Israel because the Lord yeah. Jesus is coming back again and he's going to set his foot on the Mount of Olives and he's going to make everything straight and the Battle of Armageddon will be put straight too. But I want to end, please, with this next headline that certainly is quite provocative. Americans ask, where can I be safe? I'm going to go to Pastor Shepherd. You know, there's one place in this world that we can be safe, and that's in the arms of Jesus. I feel safe. With everything going on around me, I know that the Lord is in control. The Lord's in control of Israel. The Lord's in control of everything happening in the world, and the Lord is in control of my life and how grateful I am. Pastor Shepherd. is that not a wonderful, wonderful, Absolutely. peaceful thought? That in the world in which we're living, horrible things yeah. going on, famine, pestilence, terrorism, everything else, pointing yeah. to the return of the Lord, yes. we can be safe in the Lord, correct? That's right. The Lord Jesus Christ has offered the gift of salvation. And uh, the Bible says in Romans 6, 23, that it is indeed a gift. In Romans 10, verses 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's a promise that God made. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You can accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior right now with me. Yes, Pastor, right now we're going to pray that wonderful prayer. Will you pray with the pastor right now the prayer of accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior? He's the only way to heaven. Please pray this prayer with Pastor Shepherd. Pray with me, folks. Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, and because of my sins I would have to die and go to hell. But I want to accept Jesus Christ to come into my heart. Forgive me for all my sins and take me to heaven when I die. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me and dying for my sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Did you pray that prayer? Oh, if you did, please write to me. There's my address. And as always, I will send you this wonderful book, First Steps in a New Direction. You want to walk the right way? The Lord will walk with you because now he's in your heart. You've been forgiven of any sin in your life. Now, whew, this is the wind-up of eternity, this wonderful, wonderful offer of the week. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck. Thank you, Rex Ella, my friend, to order eternity. Who, where, when, why? Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jock Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rex Ella. As I mentioned, this is the wind-up, so please make the call. There's a 100 number in there, etc. All your questions answered on there. Let me just say, friends, we're living in a dark hour, but even in life's darkest hour, Christians have the brightest hope. Look forward to being at home again next week, and until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.